there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is an exciting pen review day. Yesterday I posted a video which outlined the changes Leonardo Officina Italiana is making to their nibs, changing from Bach to Yovo as their supplier. In the package of replacement nibs that Salvatore Matrone, the designer of the Momento Zero and the Ferrari sent me, he included one of the brand new, just announced, Grande versions of the Furore, the Leonardo Affazzina Italiana Furore Grande Verde Smeraldo. I am Italian, sono Italiano in spirito, ma ho esposato una donna che preferisce lavorare nel giardino a far l'amore appassionato un spallo grande. This emerald green is also a new color from Leonardo. I don't have my regular size Furore to compare this with, and I'm anxious to show you this new model. So I'm going to do a first looks video instead of a full review. I'll do a comprehensive review next week when I get my Ferrari Salt back. So let's not waste any more time and open this box right now. <music> Here is part of the unboxing I held back in yesterday's video. But I suspect this box is not just housing two nibs. Oh my goodness. Let me lift this up so you can see. This is a Ferrari Grande. They announced the Ferrari Grande. Oh, so he's sent me a Ferrari Grande for evaluation. I am so excited. So this box is so big, it hardly fits in the frame. <laughs> so it looks the same as my other, other Ferrari, but it is a grande size. So the box is El Grande. And the inner sleeve is the same. And we have the inner box, which is the same, but grande. Let's open it up. Ah, I see why it's bigger. There's the document. Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful turquoise. And there's a bottle of Leonardo Officina Italiana Blue. And here's the Grande. Wow. Look at that. Number 4402. Silver. Hardware. Medium. Steel nib with an ebonite feed. And it is a piston filler. That feels very smooth. Oh, oh my goodness, I love this pen already. But I will try to be as objective as I can and I will run some little soapy water through this, dry it out, and do a full review. In my email exchange with Salvatore, he sent me this newsletter which has some information about the new model. Here are some of the highlights along with some of the photos from that newsletter. After numerous requests received from the world market, Leonardo decides to introduce the new Ferrari in the large version with piston mechanism, ebonite conductor, steel or gold nibs available. Slightly softer lines at the ends than the large MZ, the clip and the grip are the same. The pen body diameters are also identical. Piston filling, designed and produced in our workshops, huge capacity 1.5 milliliter, black ebonite feed, available only in fountain pen version. The package includes a 40 milliliter ink bottle. The Grande version of the Ferrari features a stainless steel ring. We therefore guarantee that it is not subject to oxidation or peel over time or in contact with the ink. And here are some measurements.
four different resins. A new emerald green joins the blue Hawaii, blue Positano, and purple. Note, the four colors are available only with white rhodium finishes, except the purple version available in white rhodium and rose gold, the latter only with a gold nib. And here are some stats. Please check those prices carefully. This pen retails at Applebaum for $369.16 Canadian or $268 US. That is for the steel nib. A gold nib will cost you $619.45 or $466.49 US. I want to just focus on the acrylic resin here for a moment. In Italian, this is Verde Smeraldo or Emerald Green. The acrylic looks identical in chatoyance and pearlescence to my photo de salt, only it's in emerald green. The photos do not do this justice, or does video. It is just stunning. You folks who have been watching my channel will know that I tend to fawn over the beauty and variety of acrylics from Pen BBS, but Pen BBS have nothing like this. Let's do a close-up overview of this pen. Because scale is so important in photos and on video, here is my Momento Zero for scale. As the newsletter said, this pen has many of the same dimensions as the Momento Zero Grande. The sections are identical, only the end finials are different. This is a classic bullet or cigar-shaped pen. Here it is alongside a Wing Song 626, which is fairly close to uh, the original Schaefer balance in size and shape. And here is a Pilot Metropolitan next to the Furore Grande. Let's put the Homo Sapiens I still have from my review. This belongs to Sean. Let's put it up next to the Furore Grande and you get an idea of just how large this Furore is. But the Homo Sapiens is definitely heavier than the Furore as the Furore is only 30 grams in total. The cap tapers up in a classic cigar shape and we see the rhodium plated clip which extends directly out of the cap. The clip has the roller tip and the clip is very springy. Then we see two rhodium rings and the acrylic then tapers down quite sharply at an angle and there's absolutely no step whatsoever down to the barrel which has another rhodium ring right there at the top of the barrel. The barrel has engraved Leonardo Officina Italiana number 4402. This is a numbered pen but it is not a limited edition. The barrel is straight for just a bit where then it starts tapering down smoothly to a matching cigar shaped end finial which is also the piston knob which is separated from the barrel by another rhodium ring. For its size the pen is remarkably light as I said at 30 grams it's uh, that's uninked and 31 grams inked. The piston filling mechanism as mentioned in the newsletter has been developed and engineered in-house at Leonardo. It certainly feels unique. When you unscrew the piston knob there is a feeling that there is a worm gear of some sort, some fine ratcheting mechanism inside. It does not feel rough, but you definitely feel it. It's not that it isn't a smooth operation, it's very smooth, but it's a unique feeling I have not felt with other piston fillers like this Pelican M205, where it just glides because you feel that piston sliding in inside the barrel. It would be interesting to find out what that mechanism was, but I'm not going to destroy this pen to find out. Inquiring minds don't want to know that much. The cap comes off with one and about an eighth of a turn to reveal our familiar milk bottle shaped acrylic section 
Only this one has the wide stainless steel ring at the top of the section that was mentioned in the newsletter just before the nib, which Leonardo guarantees not to oxidize or peel over time. I think that's a really nice feature. This is a good thing. When I inked my Ferrari salt for the first time, I did it in the classic way, dipping the nib and the feed into the ink up to the section. With that very white acrylic, it very quickly discolored it, and I vowed to only fill that pen with a syringe from now on. But this one probably won't be a problem. A stainless steel ring like this would limit that kind of damage over time. And we see the rhodium-plated steel Yovo nib. This nib is larger than a standard number six nib. Uh, I'm going to measure it with my calipers and I'm going to put some measurements up here on the screen. It's just slightly bigger, uh, slightly longer. It's slightly bigger at the base, slightly bigger at the shoulders, and slightly longer from the section to the tip. Now I haven't pulled either nib to actually measure the length from the tip to the end of the shank, but uh, Suffice it to say, when I put the Memento Zero nib right next to the Furore Grande nib, you can see that there's a slight difference in size there. When we close up on the nib, we see the familiar Leonardo name with the wings and Italy in script and an M for medium, laser etched. There's a simple border uh, and none of the filigree that we see on the Yovo nib uh, from the Momento Zero or the uh, Furore. I thought with that simple border on this nib that this might be a Bach instead of a Yovo uh, since uh, Salvatore had announced that uh, these pens will have the um, Yovo nib starting in January 2021 and this one is from 2020. But I emailed him last night and he assured me, I emailed him a photo of this nib last night and he assured me this is a Yovo. And here we see the Ebonite feed, which is made in-house uh, by Leonardo. And you can see the porous nature of that and how it sucked up some ink. And it's actually got a split. I'm just noticing here on camera. actually got a bit of a gouge out there right there you can see it I'm sure that won't affect the performance but I have to look at my photos to see whether I did that or whether it came like that the cap posts deeply and securely and doesn't severely offset the balance of the pen although it does become a tad long in my hand there's a small lip milled into the inside of the cap, which meets up with the section, which uh, functions as a cap seal. Now let's pull out the Leonardo Blue ink, which is supplied with all Grande versions of both the Momento Zero and the Furore, and ink this pen up. Okay, we unscrew the blind cap. Now if this were previously full of ink, ink would be shooting out all over my hand right now and you can see the interior there the workmanship no bare threads it seems to be attached to a cylinder fascinating and it looks like there's a notch there and there for removal and uh, one of these days I might be brave enough but not today. So that piston will be all the way down there. Let's open up our bottle of ink and I'm going to put the pen into the ink the classic way and I'm going to screw the piston down. Like that. And I'm going to bring it back open again, which will push all the ink back out down through the feed and then do it again, bringing the piston back. And that length of time immersed in the ink should saturate that ebonite feed 
two pushes and draws on that piston should fill that chamber completely. And a wipe with a cloth and we're fully inked. So it's time to do some writing. Join me at camera one's alternate position over there. Okay, iPhone camera one is now over some paper with my Foro de Grande. And uh, I'm doing a full review of this pen next week when I have my Ferrari Salt back again, as I mentioned before. So I usually write on Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, but this is Tomoe River. Beautiful paper in a little notebook. So I'm going to play with this. And we'll do the writing sample on the Clairefontaine next week. I've actually been writing with this pen for a couple of days now. What? You thought I'd let this pen sit in the box until I could share the loss of its ink virginity with you guys? Whoa, <laughs> you're way off. 12 inches. Oh, I go way off. But let's see how it writes. Leonardo. Alfredina. Italiana. Furore, Verde, Smeraldo, with a medium, Yovo, Steel Nib. The ink is Leonardo, Leonardo, blue. It's actually a, a fairly nice azure blue, which is very similar to a Roshizuku Kanpeki. So it's on the blue-green side of the spectrum. I would have called it Leonardo C blue or something like that. As to line variation, there is no pressure whatsoever. There's a little bit of pressure, so there's a bit of spring in this nib, which doesn't surprise me, even being steel, because it is actually very long. I'm thinking that gives it a little bit more leverage. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, well, I could write all day with that in reverse. It doesn't dry out at all, and it gives me a slightly finer line. And some quick writing. Yeah, no problems at all. That feed is very nicely saturated and keeping up very well. So I'm going to hold off my likes and dislikes evaluation of this pen until I can put three Leonardo's up against each other next week. My Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, uh, the Furore Grande, and my Furore Salt. Hmm, an Italian three-way. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. For now, let me just say that this is a substantial pen. It isn't just a signature pen big. It is a pen that feels extraordinary in the hand. When I was with Jack the other day in the lobby of his condominium, um, he was working on Sean's um, Homo Sapiens. Uh, and he let me play with a number of his amazing pens. There was a Mont Blanc 149, and he had a case with a whole bunch of cool Homo sapiens. 
but I picked up two of his limited edition Leonardo's. One had a music nib and the other one had an elastic nib, both gold. They were both grande size pens. This pen holds its own alongside the Mont Blanc 149. I'm not talking about writing quality, just how it feels and looks in the hand. So there you have it. Join me next week when I'll compare the Memento Zero and the Furore with this substantial pen. Many, many thanks go out to Salvatore Matrone for providing this pen for review. This pen was unsolicited by me and provided to me to review and keep. I don't believe for a second that Salvatore was buying my opinion. I'm no pen expert. I'm just a guy in his basement playing with his pens. <gasps> And you know that I'll continue to say what I think and share my experience of these pens, whether they're a thousand bucks or ten bucks. I'm confident that's all Mr. Matroni is expecting. Still, it is exceedingly generous. I'm very grateful. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Grazie per aver guardato. And that's all she wrote. I made this.